Welcome back to Feral Keyline Designs YouTube channel. I know I've been gone for a while, and to be honest, it feels good to be back in doing vlogs. In the last few months of hiatus, I stock up edits and process of DIY projects, so I'm currently loaded with updates which will be needed to be uploaded in the channels in the coming days. I may not be able to upload every other day, but I will try my best to upload videos every week. For today's project, I'm excited to share to you guys this new JSK sewing project. This sewing project is simple and very easy to make. I actually had so much fun working with this as my pastime project. This is a simple JSK dress that is from my Bea Liana Lolita collection. Without any further ado, let's start and begin the project. Just like how we usually start our projects, I will start by doing the skirt part of the whole dress first. The skirt pattern for this project dress is divided into three main pieces cuts. The first top most part of the skirt is around 15 inches. This is a light blue cloth that is also the main cloth of this project. The second layer cut is another shade of blue which is a lot more darker compared on the first layer one. This layer is around 5 inches in length. The last lowest part of the skirt is the same cloth of the first layer of the skirt. This layer will be also cut into 5 inches length. To start of the process, we will need to sew all pattern pieces into one full skirt. The main blue cloth was cut into a very continuous rectangle, while the darker blue one needed 4 panels to match up the measures of the main blue cloth. I simply sew all the darker cloth to make a one continuous panel skirt to match the measures of the blue rectangle piece. Then, we can now sew it all together as one skirt. Let's start the first layer into panels. Start with the first layer of the panel skirt. Simply attach the darker color panel piece in the first layer of skirt. I did an extra measure for this step which are not shown in the video. I flat ironed the seams down before finishing all the raw edges of the sewn parts before also running those raw edges into the overlock machine. Once you are done with that, you can then now proceed to sew the last panel part into the skirt. The whole width of the skirt is a continuous rectangle that is around 120 inches in width, while the length is around 25 inches. After this, we will run all the seam stitch in the overlock machine, finishing all the raw edges from the inside of the skirt. Now that we already have our full skirt, we can now start gathering the whole panel skirt into the waist measures of my model. My model's waist measure is around 27 inches with 2 inches allowance. Again, don't forget to leave at least 2 inches non-gathered part on each side of the panel skirt. This will be our seam allowance later on when we close the back part of the whole dress. Once you have the skirt done, you can leave it be for now and we can now move on to the main top bodies. The main top bodies has two layers, which is the lining cloth and the main blue cloth. I will be using this darker blue shade cloth for the lining, and since I don't have enough darker lining cloth, I will need to sew two panels together to match the measures we need for this project. The weight measure of this whole project is your chest measure. My model's chest measure is around 35 inches. Add 2 inches seam allowance in this measure. Lay the two panel lining together right facing each other, and then sew them flat together in the middle. Once you finish this, you can now open the seam and iron it flat. Sew the panels in their designated sides. This will avoid the bulkiness in the lining plot. Now, identify the center point of both lining cloth and the main blue cloth, and then continue to sew them flat together.
cut all the excess cloth and clean all the raw edges. Once you finish this, you can now start marking our taxings in place. My taxings is standardly measured around 4 inches from the center point of the whole bodies, and the height of my taxing is standardly around 5 inches. You can then now flat stitch your mark taxing in place. When you finish this step, our next process is to decorate the front bodies. The detail works on this collection is simple and neat. So I will just sew this gold metallic cloth on each side of the taxing. I'm sewing this bias works 2 inches from the taxing. It will be your choice if you wanted the bias work to be inside the taxing or outside. But in this process, I decided to go from the inside and I will sew my taxing in that position. When you finish this step, you will then top stitch the whole top bodies flat. Make sure to top stitch the top and the bottom part of the bodies neatly. This will secure the bias work in place so it will not move when we run the whole bodies into the overlock machine. Now we can run the top bodies into the overlock machine to finish all the raw edges of the top bodies. Once the piece was already done, we will then now finish the top part of the bodies. Simply fold the top part of the bodies flat and then flat stitch them to finish the edges. I'm just folding half an inch in this process, but you are free to change these measures. After this, we can now attach the skirt on the main bodies. Fold the bodies and the skirt in the middle to identify the center point of the pieces. You can mark this point or simply go straight into sewing them down. I usually skip the marking process since I'm comfortable enough to straightly do them without marks. I usually start sewing from the middle part of the skirt until I reach the edge of that side. Then, once I finish that side, I will go on the other side and then start sewing from then. This way, you can avoid uneven shears and frills on each side of the skirts. When you finish this step, you can then now go and rerun the whole dress for another top stitch. This will help secure the attachment of the bodies and the skirt and this will also give you a more finer stretch seam stitch. Now it's time to finish the back closure part of the dress. But before we do that, you will need to run the back raw edges on the overlock machine. Once the edges are done, you can then now stitch the back panels together. Since I added so much allowance in this project, I will need to sew at least 3 inches from the edge in this process. Since we have a 3 layer panel in our skirts, we need to make sure all those lines will match neatly. Once this step is done, you will then unstitch 12 inches from the top back part for the closure. We will need to flat stitch the seam allowance panel on each designated sides. Our next step is to finally finishing the raw edges of the skirt. I'm folding a 3 inches seam in this step. Since I had enough allowance for this skirt, I wanted the edge of the project to be bold and stiff. And we can only achieve that if we have very thick fold finish for the skirt.
we can now move on in making the straps. I will be doing a piping works on one of the sides of the strap. Get your metallic cloth again and then fold it in the middle and then sew it on one side of the panel cloth for your strap. This is the inside part of the strap since we will be turning it inside out later on. Once the gold cloth was sewn down, you will then now take your main cloth and flat stitch them together, sandwiching the gold cloth inside the two panels cloth. Cut all the extra cloth in this process since we don't need a bulky strap for this dress. Turn the whole panel cloth inside out and then poke all the corners for a clean finish. Now we will flat stitch the side of the strap where we sew the metallic cloth. This will secure the gold piping in place and will give you up a more fine and neat edges. Sew the other sides of the straps, leaving the top and the bottom parts of the straps open. Before we attach the strap on the dress, you will need to run the edges of the strap into the overlock machine to finish the raw edges. Once you finish this step, then you can now sew the strap in place. Our next step is making the back corset ribbons for the closure. Simply sew a strip like string, then cut the string into 2 inches. You will need 8 string pieces for the back closure. This will be our loop hole ribbons for closure. Before we attach and sew the strip, you will first need to mark where we will sew them. I'm marking 2 inches from the edge on this back panel. Once your markings are done, you can then now start sewing the strip in place. Also, make sure to get the back panel flap out of the way when you sew the strips in the markings. Since the flap are long, it might be sewn down together with the strip and we don't want that to happen. To finish the top bodies, I've sewn few gold buttons beside the bias works. Now, I can finally say that the JSK project is finally done. I really enjoy making this dress. This JSK set is one of my favorite. The color tones and the cuts are both unique and fun to make. I do hope that I can work on this kind of dresses in the future, since Lolita is not just about ruffles and laces. I'm trying to work on dresses that has minimal or almost no ruffles or lace works. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you all guys really soon. Soon. Don't forget to comment down below and give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments or suggestions of what you wanted to see in our next updates, then please do comment down below your suggestions. Again, see you guys really soon and happy sewing everyone. Bye bye!